Hello YouTube, today I'm going to talk about poor de-aging. Well, in this first video I'm going to talk about um, the processes that allow poor tea to age. Uh, basically there are two of them. Uh, first you have enzyme oxidation by the enzymes present in the tea leaves and the second one is um, oxidation and degradation of the, the structure by the microorganisms. Okay, let's talk first about the enzymes. Poor tea is a bit like green tea, but the main difference is that in poor tea, uh, some of the enzymes are still active, right? So, uh, why is it so? It's just because um, the, the shatting, the kilgrin process, was made uh, in a slightly different way. Uh, we didn't cook the leaves as dry, we didn't allow temperature to increase, to increase so much uh, in the tea leaves so as to destroy all of the enzymes and on top of that uh, the drying was made in the sun and not with hot air when you dry tea with hot air uh, you, de you, you deactivate a lot of the enzymes because at that time uh, the, the air is hot the tea is dry and under those conditions uh, the enzymes present in tea are very, uh, are very sensitive are very easily degraded so, uh, since we didn't do that in poor tea, uh, we, can, we, can have, um, we can still have a partial oxidation occurring. So, let me remind you that in poor tea, we have deactivated most of the enzymes. If we hadn't done that, um, the oxidation process would go much faster and the tea would, would, be, uh, the tea would be totally red, probably in a couple of days or weeks. What determines uh, the speed of this oxidation? Well, uh, three parameters temperature, humidity, and enzyme quantity. So, as you can see on this graph, this is a graph of the relationship between temperature uh, and enzyme activity. This was taken in the fresh leaves. Well, we can assume that uh, this diagram is still valid for dried leaves, although it's not 100% sure, but I haven't found any diagram for dried leaves. So as you can see, uh, like the optimal temperature to maximize enzyme activity is about 40 degrees. And below that you have kind of a linear relationship uh, between temperature and enzyme activity. Which is surprising because usually most chemical reactions have a, a kind of a, an exponential relationship. Like as a rule of thumb we say that uh, the rate of reaction doubles every 10 degrees. But enzymes work in a much more complex way than a, a simple chemical reaction, so that might, explain, that might explain why we have a linear relationship instead of an, an exponential one. Enzyme activity is influenced by the dryness of tea. The higher moisture content in the tea, uh, the higher the enzyme activity, but I haven't found uh, a nice chart that would illustrate this in an accurate way for tea leaves. And then you have the, the enzyme quantity. Uh, this is a very important point, actually. Uh, I found it mentioned in a paper that uh, processing technique actually does have an influence on the, the aging speed of poor tea. Uh, what I mean by this is, if you gave a strong shatching, for example, a strong kilgrin process, maybe you deactivated a lot of the enzymes, and it means that, um, of course, the uh, the, the amount of enzymes working afterwards during the storage time uh, will be lower and of course that, that will take more time for the tea to oxidize. Now let me talk about microorganisms. So, microorganisms, um, basically you have fungi and bacteria. The tea is too dry for bacteria to develop in a significant way. So most of the job is done by uh, fungus. So most of the fungi found in uh, poor tea belong to the Ascomistis family. Uh, they are the ones who, who have a tiny, tiny sacs like uh, little spores that, looks, that look like tiny mushrooms, that look like uh, small white or blue dots on some poor cakes. In dry storage conditions, microorganisms won't be able to develop too much because it's too dry. Practically, what, what the fungi do in, in the tea is that uh, they feed on the tea. They, they use the carbon from the tea uh, to grow. 
to do that, usually they release enzymes and they, they try to dig through to dig through the cells. They, they need to penetrate the cell walls and eat what's inside and dig through, dig through the leaves. So they degrade them, they degrade the cell structure. They, they do this mainly by a chemical way, by releasing enzymes that will break down the cells. And among those enzymes are also some enzymes that will oxidize the polyphenols, just uh, like the enzymes naturally present in the tea. Um, the presence of, of fungi can allow uh, polyphenols to oxidize thanks to their enzymes, uh, but it, uh, it also has other effects. Some stuff that the, the fungi release might have a specific smell, and this is what creates the like the musty smell of the of wet stored poor tea, that typical smell, whether it's some attic smell or basement smell, what you smell basically is the the work of microorganisms and all their metabolites, like all what they produce. In very wet storage conditions, you can have a, a nasty kind of uh, fungi that grow on the tea and that will have a, a very disgusting musty smell. Um, well, the difference between between good good wet storage and overly wet storage and moldy tea is really in the smell. Like you, you can easily feel the difference. If the smell is, if the smell is disgusting, uh, then it means that bad fungi has grown on your tea. The presence of tiny white spots on tea uh, can be normal under under very humid storage. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the tea has turned bad. Uh, you will know if the tea has turned bad more by the smell. And sometimes you, you can have a disgusting smell but no, no apparent uh, white dots. And sometimes you have white dots uh, but the smell is good. And in this case uh, it's fine to, to drink the tea. So the heavy presence of fungi in, in tea is really what makes that, that special uh, wet stored smell that we can find in, in tea stored in Hong Kong, Taiwan or Guangdong. But of course you have to be careful with humidity because if it's too humid you will have that uh, nast nasty kind of fungi that will grow on the tea. Bacteria can also be found in poor tea. So bacteria are much smaller than fungi and they have only one cell and uh, the cell organization is also different. The major difference between fungi and bacteria is that bacteria requires a wetter environment uh, to grow. So below a certain amount of water in the tea, they won't be able to grow. Now, under uh, most typical storage, bacteria won't be allowed to grow in raw poor. But when making ripe poor tea uh, during the pile fermentation process, uh, the bacteria will be allowed to thrive and they will work along the, um, the fungi uh, to degrade the tea. An important point about microorganisms growth is that um, temperature influences the rate at which they, they will grow, but even at low temperature you t your tea can turn moldy if it's wet. Now on a practical side, when you store poor tea, you can monitor temperature and relative humidity in the air. I read many papers and I recouped information and I concluded that below 60% relative humidity there can be no mold growth in tea. So below 60% humidity only the enzymes will change the tea. Between 60 and 70% relative humidity most of the fungi won't be allowed to grow. Only the fungi called serophilic, which means they, they like dryness, uh, will be able to grow. Uh, microbial activity will have only a very limited influence on the tea. Most of the aging will be due to the enzymes. Above 70% relative humidity, fungi activity increases a lot. Um, many, more, many more species can grow and then uh, fungi will take a more important role. Then above 80% humidity you can consider it's a very wet storage and microorganisms will have um, a much more important activity compared to the enzymes uh, in the in the aging process of tea uh, and then you're, you're quite at risk at that, at that point of having uh, really nasty teas so you have to be careful where, when you're at like 80% humidity yeah? you can have a look at these charts which show 
uh, the relative humidity in Beijing, Kunming and Hong Kong uh, along the year. But of course relative humidity can vary a lot depending on your location. These humidities were probably measured at ground floor and if you live a, in a high-rise building, as soon as you go above like the 10th floor, uh, humidity decreases dramatically. And if you live by a lake or by a river, uh, that relative humidity is probably higher. Then, of course, as you know, relative humidity is affected by temperature. Um, so this was, these measurements were taken outside. If you use a heater or, or if you use aircon, uh, relative humidity will be lower inside your home. And usually in the wet environment, aircon is used uh, as a way to decrease humidity. I also read in another paper about uh, Indian black tea that it's a problem uh, if your tea is too dry because if your tea, uh, if your tea moisture goes below 5%, a lot of vol volatile um, compounds will, will leave the tea and that will give a stale flavor. And this kind of stale flavor, we can't find it, I think, in overly, overly dried stored cakes, uh, especially like, like Beijing store. So, be careful also not to, not to have your tea too dry. Then, to talk more about the volatile compounds, of course, uh, a tea smells good, it has a natural fragrance, you, you can smell it in young tea. And this fragrance come from, comes from the leaves themselves, and they slowly evaporate. So it's better to limit the airflow if you want to keep those flavors uh, around the tea because those are just volatile. They will evaporate the more airflow you have, uh, the less fragrance you will preserve. Well, when stored by professionals, tea is of course stored in large quantities. So the most common method is just to, the most common method of storing tea in China is simply to pack it uh, by six tons in cardboard boxes so in one, in one box you have 15 kilo of tea and you pile them up, you pile them up as much as you can. So you can imagine under those conditions uh, the airflow is very limited and that will help uh, preserve the amount, of, um, the amount of volatile compounds, the amount of fragrance, natural fragrance you'll find in the, in the tea. So be very careful as to avoid uh, direct sunlight because it will damage your tea and it will probably uh, permanently damage your tea in a couple of, in maybe half an hour, you know. Uh, I think the mechanism is, uh, if, you, if you have direct sunlight uh, striking your, your poor tea cake, first it will heat up, that will lead to more drying, and that, will, that might provoke the, the effect I, I just mentioned before, of having an overly dry tea and the volatile compounds um, leaving the tea cake and having a stale tea. But uh, what it probably does is it also has a, an effect with the UV probably from the, from the sun, sun rays which uh, damage the, the cells in other ways. I don't know exactly how, how that works, but uh, if the tea has been exposed to direct sunlight, it will taste like a very, very green tea. It might have, on the first brew, you might have a very floral fragrance, but then you will have a very stale tea, very bland. Uh, with a very light mouth feel and almost yeah like nobody in the tea so um, uh, yeah be, be very careful of sunlight. A limitation on the data I've collected is that uh, the, that data doesn't come from research on poor tea especially the relation between relative air humidity and uh, moisture content at equilibrium with air that comes from research on Japanese tea and Indian black tea, like broken orange pekko. Well, those studies show similar data with a slight differences, of course, which might be due to the different structure of the leaves. The relationship between relative humidity and moisture content uh, might be different for a cake and for a maocha and for Japanese tea and for an Indian broken orange pekko. Unfortunately, I haven't found any research um, on the subject which uses uh, poor tea cakes, and it would be very interesting to do one. But the theoretical results I found are quite in accordance with the empirical data we have. 70% relative humidity is an often cited uh, value when talking about uh, tea storage in China. The influence of temperature 
on microorganism growth is not clear either. Um, are there some specific species which are more competitive under certain temperature? That's probably the case, and in that case, it would mean that different temperatures uh, would have a, a different ecosystem in the cake, and then that would probably lead to different kinds of tastes. But this is just speculation because I have no data to support this. So to summarize this video, poor tea ages thanks to two things. First, the enzymes naturally present in, in the tea and the microorganisms. Poor tea stored uh, below 70% relative humidity, enzymes do most of the job of aging. And that means you won't have many uh, musty fragrance due to microorganisms and you will have more of that natural fragrance of tea which will slowly oxidize so you'll get from more floral to more fruity tea. When stored above 70% relative humidity microorganisms will play a, a bigger role and then you will have more uh, musty fragrance um, more like basement or attic fragrance which are more related to microorganisms activity. If you're only looking at enzyme activity the optimal temperature should be around 40 degrees, that's the temperature at which uh, the enzymes work the fastest. And if you want tea to age fast, you have to look at how it was processed. If the kill green process was strong and eliminated most of the enzymes, it will take much more time for the tea to age than um, if it was not as strong. So when you buy tea, think about whether you want to drink it now uh, or store it for later. If you want to store for later, I wouldn't recommend overly fragrant teas because overly fragrant teas usually have less enzymes. They are more processed like green teas. In the same way, I wouldn't really recommend overly red teas because maybe they will age too fast, they will oxidize too fast and uh, they won't be as rich maybe as uh, like an intermediate version between green and red. And that intermediate version is what we aim for when we are uh, processing our teas. So we do everything so that our teas can age well. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel and visit our website. Uh, I've put the link of our website and the reference I used to make this video in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.